Hey, welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner and another Windows Server 2012 video tutorial. Now, in today's video, as I'm sure the title told you already, we're going to talk about password policies, how we set that up, and how it affects your users. We want to talk about that today. So let's go ahead. We can get started with password policies. So here we are already. We're in our server manager. This is our meat and potatoes of Windows Server 2012, where all the fun things take place. We're going to simply go under Tools up here at the very top, top right, and go down to our GPO, or Group Policy Management. Once you're in Group Policy Management, you want to pick out your default domain policy. And the reason we do this under default domain policy is so it's the same for everybody, no matter where they're at within your domain structure. Let's go ahead and right click on that and we're going to go to edit. Now that we're in edit, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to open this up a little bit here so we can see what's going on. Pull this down a little bit. Now what we're going to do here, we are going to actually go under right here where it says computer policies. So computer configuration, that means it's everybody that sits at this computer is exactly going to be affected the same way. It's not a user policy, it's a computer configuration policy. There we go. Once we're in here, we're going to be talking about some Windows settings. So under Windows settings, you're going to be looking at security settings. Click the little triangle in front of that. And now we're into where our account policies are. So under account policy, there's two things that I like to work with and deal with when I'm setting up my account policies. The first is my password policy. So what kind of password policy are you going to have? And I have to tell you, when you do this, you're going to have to have a, a lot of buy-in. If you're the tech director, you're going to have to have a lot of buy-in from everybody, as you probably know, around you. Uh, because we set this thing up. I like it to uh, expire every 90 days. 30 would be better, but 90 is okay. I like to remember my passwords uh, for a certain length of time. So we're going to go ahead and look at how we do this. Okay, in first, <laughs> enforce password history. Now this is really, really overzealous here because they're saying, remember the past 24 passwords. We like to limit this to five. So that's what I was just telling you. So it remembers your last five passwords. So in other words, what that means is as your users uh, change your password, you can't change it. And uh, in 30 days, change it. And in 30 days, change it back to what you had the first time. You have to have at least five passwords remembered in your head that you can use. And then that sixth time, you can go start going back through that same sequence. Click OK on that. And that is now five passwords remembered. The maximum password age. So once we change this thing, how long is it going to be good for? That's what this is asking, the maximum password age. And as I said, in my network, I set this to 90 days. So it will expire in 90 days, and it will start telling your users before then. It will start saying, look, uh, you're going to have to change your password. You're going to have to change your password. And we find our users on the 90th, 91st day, they're calling us saying, I can't get in the system because they just keep hitting, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow, and tomorrow never comes. So they end up getting locked out of the system. Okay, we'll click OK on that. The next thing here is minimum password age. In other words, if you change your password, when can you change it again? Say the user wants to change it. They want to do a control alt delete and click on change password. That's where the minimum password age comes into play. So they do that. And if it's the same day, they can't. It'll say uh, you can't change your password today. You have to wait until tomorrow. So we just leave that set to one. This is another one that really, really confuses users and seems to make it really hard on everybody and it's so drastic in their life. It's called minimum password length properties. So how long should your password be? And this is strictly up to you and based on what you believe your policies need to be within your organization. I usually like to have this set to at least five. That seems to be pretty fair. Uh, you don't want it to be two. You know, you don't want it to be uh, somebody's three, somebody's initials. So I like five seems to be pretty realistic. 
Now this one, password must meet complexity requirements. You can see here where it says it's enabled. Now, what that means is you have to have one, and it explains it right here, you have to have one uh, uppercase letter, you can use lowercase letters, and you need at least one digit. Um, and non-alphabetic non characters can also be used to make yourself a uh, more complex password. So I have it enabled here, and we normally do disable that on our network. We usually have it disabled much like that. Okay. Because actually, I don't want to make it so they have to make it so hard they can't remember it. I know it's good for us being tech, uh, tech folks out there, but for the individual user, it's not a good idea. And this last one, store your password using reversible encryption. I leave that disabled. I don't want them encrypted for you know, obvious reasons. Now we're going to look at account lockout policies. These are very, very important because what this will allow you to do is set up a policy stating uh, some basic rules where if somebody comes to your network and they know uh, all of our usernames are first initial last name and they just start hacking passwords, they just start typing, 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 or use a password cracker brute force attack, you want to make sure that account's going to lock before anything drastically happens. So. First thing we have here is account lockout duration. So this is telling us if the account gets locked out, how long will it stay locked out? I leave this disabled because I have to go back in and unlock the account so I know that something went wrong. Account lockout threshold. Now this is what I was just telling you about. This is the stuff here where if you have failed long on attempts, 0 to 9, 999, which that's just... You shouldn't even set if you're going to do that high. But let's say we have this number set to a realistic number like five. And you'll find this on your banking sites, right? Or, or um, some other website you go to. If you try three or four times, it locks you out of the account. You can't get in at all. Uh, and usually until tomorrow, but sometimes you have to call the company. So we'll just leave it set to zero. The next one here is reset the account lockout counter after. So in other words, what happens is in the sequence here, let's look at the sequence. If we have a lockout duration, first we have a threshold. So they, they try their password four or five times, it locks them out. We have a duration. So this duration starts right after that lockout. And let's say we're going to set it for two days. After two days, it's going to unlock. The reset account lockout counter would be set for two days because after two days, it will reset the counter and then we can start all over again. The last thing is the care boss policies. Now this is enforce user logout re log on restrictions. Uh, you can see we have it enabled. The maximum lifetime for a service ticket. I usually leave all these just uh, defaulted. The lifetime of a user ticket, lifetime of a user ticket renewal, and the tolerance for the computer clock synchronization. So this here is a setting um, that a lot of times we find that our, our, our max actually, uh, if the max time is more than five minutes, we find that the computer will not log on to the server. The Mac will not log on to the server. So we have to go in and resynchronize the Mac, the uh, you know iMac and the Mac laptops time to get it to resynchronize. So that's where it's at right here. You can always change this tolerance and we can make it maybe 10 minutes instead of five to make it a little bit easier to work with. So that's it in a nutshell. That is how we set up our group policy uh, so we can take care of our password restrictions and know how to control our users in Windows Server 2012, it's much like it was in Windows Server 2008. So there's not a whole lot of difference in that. Now, folks, if you're just learning Windows Server 2012 and you know it's out there, I just looked the other day actually through our suppliers. We can only buy Server 2012. It's going to be hard to find uh, Server 2008, 2008 or 2 any longer. You're going to want to take a course on this to learn a little bit more about it. And at that point, you're going to want to check out my course at classroom.jackstechcorner.com. Once again, that's simply... We'll bring it up here for you. It is classroom dot 
jackstechcorner.com. And once you're in here, you can actually uh, come in here and you can see the classes here at the bottom and there's Windows Server 2012 right there. So you just simply click on the, on the course name that you'd like to take. You go in, you register for the course and you just simply pay through PayPal and you'll be in the course. These courses are very much unlimited as far as time goes. Take as much time as you need and I never take you out of the course. So if you have to come back into the course later on, and you want to learn something or, or you want to update or refresh yourself, then the course is always available. These courses are set up very easy. Uh, it's very much for visual learners out there. So all you have to do is watch some videos. You watch a video, much like the one you're watching now. You take a quiz, you watch a video, you take a quiz. At the end of the course, what happens is you receive a certificate from me saying that you have completed the course and you're good to go. Also, there's a new course I just opened up for VMware ESXi uh, server, and that will go take you from installation of ESXi all the way to the configuration of your networks, uh, configuration of your storage units, and all the way up to creating virtual machines. So there's a ton of information in here. If you'd like to take one of these courses, they are available to you now. Uh, there's a lot of people in the courses right now, and I've been getting a lot of positive feedback. So if you want to learn Windows Server 2012, there's a very inexpensive way to do it right there for a couple hundred dollars uh, to get in there and learn what you need to learn to get started and get rolling along to being a systems administrator with Server 2012. Okay, folks, so thank you very, very much for watching this video tutorial. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube videos. Please give me some feedback, some comment on uh, on what you're doing with Windows Server and Windows Server 2012. If you're bringing up this year in your network, I know we started to roll out a couple virtual servers and we're getting those uh, initiated and ready to go. So until next time, please check out my courses and I'll see you back here very soon for another Windows Server 2012 video. Thanks, take care and goodbye.